The new Skagen Falster 3 showed up this week, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of excited for a new Falster. You see, the Skagen Falster is arguably one of the best looking Wear OS watches, and not just in my eyes, but apparently to a lot of people. So naturally, when a new one comes out and it keeps the minimalistic style that it's known for, but upgrades the functionality, it's generally a recipe for success. So really quick, let's do a complete walkthrough on it. If you guys aren't familiar, a complete walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device, so you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the hardware. Firstly, we have one case size of 42 millimeters with a 1.3 inch AMOLED round screen in the middle. It's made out of stainless steel and comes in three colors. There's a black case that comes with a brown leather band, a silver case that comes with a blue mesh silicon band, and a slightly darker silver case that comes with a metal gauge mesh band. Now focus on the case color though when you're choosing one because just like previous models, the bands are interchangeable. You can either buy them from Skagen or just search Amazon for any 22 millimeter straps that are quick release and those will work too. Now I've always been a fan of Fossil smartwatches and their subsidiary companies like Skagen because of the simplistic and minimalistic style. They're slim, clean looking, and lightweight and the new Skagen Falster 3 is no different. In fact, as with a lot of the smartwatches from the companies in the Fossil group, the Falster 3 is actually a redesign of another Fossil watch. In this case, the Fossil Watch Gen 5 which you can check out my walkthrough on at the link below if you're interested in that, if you haven't already watched it. If you have already watched it, I apologize now for the fact that some of this video will sound just like a repeat from that one. Now, that's because it is basically the same specs, but at least it is impressively squeezed into a smaller design. 42 millimeters versus the 44 for the case size, and 11 millimeters instead of 12 millimeters for the thickness, and a 1.3 inch screen instead of a 1.28 inch. And while both are minimalistic in their look, you would choose the Gen 5 or the Skagen based on the slightly different design that each has. This new watch is also swim proof up to three atmospheres or three times the normal atmospheric pressure. That is slightly less than the five atmospheres we're used to seeing nowadays, but still plenty enough for doing laps or going for a swim if you ask me. And they even now have a speaker included, something that the Falster 2 watches didn't have. You can also use that speaker to make phone calls, although I always think this is a weird look, but maybe that's just me. And thanks to the fact that they ported over some of the other pretty useful software from the Fossil Gen 5, you can also make calls on the watch and use some other interesting features while connected to an iPhone as well. We have two push buttons that we'll dive into more of what they do in a sec, and a third middle one that is also a turnable crown that you can use to more easily navigate things on the screen. For sensors, we have a heart rate monitor that can be used with Google Fit, It'll even take your heart rate automatically every 20 minutes or so, and you can tap the heart icon to have it manually take it. We also have NFC, so you can tap your watch to a terminal to pay using Google Pay or a similar account. We have GPS built in, an altimeter, accelerometer, gyroscope, ambient light sensor, and a microphone too. Powering the watch is the Qualcomm Snapdragon Wear 3100 chipset that was released a bit ago as a Wear OS specific chipset. That is paired with one gig of RAM and eight gigs of internal storage, double that of the Falster 2. The storage allows you to download songs to the device, for example, so you can play music from it via Bluetooth without needing to bring your phone with you. For battery, it is a fast charging capable one and can apparently get the Skagen Falster 3 to 80% in about 50 minutes or so. Now for software, we're running the latest version of Wear OS, so any other Wear OS watch is going to work very similarly. If you aren't familiar though, I'll quickly run through the basics. When you wake the watch, you'll be greeted by your chosen watch face, which sort of acts as your home screen, kinda. You can then tap and hold on this screen to get to all of the watch faces you currently have installed, and you can swipe between them and choose a different one. You can also tap the gear icon under any of these to be able to customize that watch face. Each watch face has its own options. Think adding widgets for your upcoming events, shortcuts to workouts, different colors for the dials, the numbers, etc. Swiping over to the left on that home screen gives you your Google Assistant section that you can tap to then talk to the assistant like you would on your phone. You can also hold down the crown button for a shortcut to that instead as well. And you can scroll through to see upcoming cards for events, traffic, etc. Kind of like how you do on your phone. Swiping down from the top brings you to your quick settings to turn on and off various items, control your music from, etc. And if you swipe down further, you can tap the gear icon to get into all of the watch's settings in general. Swiping to the right brings you to the newer tiles section. 
You can continue to swipe to the right to get to each of the tiles that range from Google Fit to the weather to your upcoming events, news, headlines, etc. And you can tap and hold in here to customize them as well. Swiping up from the bottom gives you the big reason I use smartwatches, which is notifications. You can then swipe any of them away to dismiss them or tap on them to expand them and be given more options to interact with them. Reply with canned responses, swipe on the keyboard or talk to the watch to compose a message, archive an email, etc, etc. Pushing in the crown while on the watch face will bring you to your installed apps, and you can tap and hold on any of them to pin them to the top of this list if you want. Otherwise, pushing the crown on any other screen will bring you back to the watch face, sort of like a home button. Swiping to the right on any screen will take you back to the previous one. And finally, you can customize what apps you want the other two buttons to launch when they are pressed as well. Now again, all of that is very standard fare for Wear OS and will be the same for the most part across any Wear OS enabled watch. But Skagen did add a few extra features using their own software, namely the better iPhone integration that I mentioned and a collection of extended battery modes. All of this, by the way, was available on the Fossil Gen 5. Now, the concept behind those battery modes, though, is that you can choose from three different options to adjust how the watch uses the battery, and thereby hopefully extending it beyond Wear OS is traditionally not great amount of time. By swiping down from the top of the watch, you can then tap on the battery icon and choose from the following. Daily mode, which essentially lets all the features work and is the default mode. Extended mode, which disables always on display, turns off touch tilt to wake, turns off Wi-Fi in the speaker, disables OK Google hot word detection, but still leaves notifications, heart rate, and everything else running normally. Frankly, this is the mode I usually put it in myself. And then we have time only, which does exactly what you think. It limits the watch to only be able to tell the time and thereby increase the battery life for up to a week, supposedly. The new watch costs $295, and I've left a link below to the best price that I could find on it. There, guys, complete walkthrough on the Skagen Falster 3. Let me know what you guys think about this watch, this video, etc. in the comments below. Always love hearing from you guys. And uh, if you like the video, please thumbs up or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, check out the rest of my channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, started a new series on the channel called Decoder. Uh, New video every week, every Sunday for that matter, where I explain a new piece of technology. Please check that out. I'll leave a link right here and let me know what you guys think of that. Also, let me know on, in the comments on some of those videos anything else you'd like to see me decode on a future episode. As always, though, regardless, thanks for watching.